Hi, how you guys doing? It's Johnny Miller here from Subbase Online in London. And uh, this little video, we're going to have a look at using Ableton Live for sequence DJ mixes. Now, the aim here is not necessarily to replace doing a live DJ mix. It's a very, very different skill, obviously, playing in a club and reading the crowd. That's your sort of traditional DJing. This kind of thing is more to do with putting a sequence of audio tracks together into a mix. Uh, the kind of thing that's done by uh, music labels around the world day to day when they're making compilation albums. Also, it's used in the broadcast industry to create mixes for radio shows, podcasts, etc, etc. Um, I do quite a lot of these mixes just for fun, really, but also professionally. And I've worked for various labels like the Ministry of Sound. Uh, to put together compilation albums. Um, so yeah, we're going to be using Ableton Live to sequence a mix. And um, the aim of this course really is to start bringing in some of the production uh, techniques and ethics that we use day to day when we make tunes and using some of those skills, using the functions that are in Ableton Live to give us content to essentially add new and original elements to our DJ mix. Of course, all the songs that we've chosen for the mix are all in there sequenced perfectly so they blend really nicely from one to the other but there are certain aspects of this mix which are completely original adding beats adding percussion adding 100% uh, original sound effects and also working with stuff like vocals um, as well bringing acapellas in and um, yeah all the kind of stuff that I would do day to day when I'm making a, a mix in Ableton now fundamentally everything uh, evolves around warping tracks and using Ableton's warping function which allows us to stretch audio um, in different ways for different reasons um, using that warping function to essentially prepare each track make sure that each track we have originally uh, in the mix ends up at the same tempo. There will be slightly different tempos, but roughly all around the same tempo. So for instance, this particular mix, um, most of the tracks I've used are in the sort of deep house, Afro house uh, area, and uh, they're all roughly about 123, 124 beats per minute. And um, the main aim of putting this mix together, the main sort of preparation for it, um, is taking all these tracks and unifying their, their tempo so they all play back at 124 beats per minute. Now I can of course change over time the tempo of my tracks. I could slow the mix down, speed the mix up. We get into all this kind of stuff on the course. But the fundamental skill that we're going to be looking at uh, is warping tracks and in, in many ways as I said uh, a moment ago this is the preparation for the mix. This is the sort of work that we do um, to prep all of our tracks. So I've got a track here by Jimster and um, this particular audio file, I've literally just dragged this into session view into an audio clip. Uh, I'm going to switch the warping on and just zoom in to the very, very beginning of the audio track. And what you'll see here is quite a common example of the, well, the type of thing you'll, you'll see when you load dance music tracks into Ableton to work on. We've got a little bit of dead air at the beginning of the audio file. And again, this is completely standard. And it's one of the things that when you um, load tracks into Ableton and you start warping them for your DJ mix, uh, it's one of the things to kind of look out for. Now, if I zoom out a tiny, tiny bit, and uh, we have a look at the the, uh, the bar numbers, beats numbers at the top of the clip here. We've got one, and if I zoom out a tiny bit more, there we go. One, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. Bar two, 2.2, 2 2.3, 2 2.4. So of course, that is each beat of the bar that we have in our, in our fixed grid. And actually if I right click and change the fixed grid to quarter notes, now we can see each beat of the bar behind the audio in the fixed grid. Now, of course, we need to line up the beats that we have on our track to these particular beat and bar numbers. And you can see the audio quite clearly what's going on. If I if actually, let me just solo this and play the track. So we can hear that we've got a kick, nice steady kick on each beat of the bar. And of course, I now need to line those beats up with the beat and bar numbers at the top of the clip. So let's do that. Let's just zoom in, have a look at this. Uh, first beat here, so there it is. And uh, I'm just going to place a warp marker 
on the transient that Ableton has given me when I loaded this audio in. And of course, any audio clip that you load into uh, Ableton, Ableton reads what's going on in the audio. It looks for transient peaks and it places a little triangle. You can see it there on each peak of audio. Uh, now, if your audio is very detailed, you might get lots and lots of these little transients with each particular peak of audio. Um, and I'm going to use those and essentially add warp markers to them. So if I zoom in here, I'm just going to take this first transient and uh, just double click, create a warp marker. And then I'm going to right click on that warp marker again and set 111 here. That tells, the, uh, that tells Ableton that this is where we want the clip to begin. So now I've got that there. You can ignore this first warp marker that's on the left hand side. We don't really need that anymore. Because now when I press play on the clip, the clip will start from that first beat. And I would say this is the same as when you, you know, put a CD into a CDJ or line up a track on, on a CDJ. Sometimes you have to set a new cue point on the track. You have to find the first beat and then hit the Q button. And this is the sort of same thing here. We're just lining up the very first beat of the track with beat and bar number one inside the clip. Now, if I zoom out a tiny bit more, you can still see that even though that first beat is absolutely synced perfectly to beat one of the clip, everything else is a little bit out, right? We can see that. So I need to line this up and I'm going to warp this track um, using a function called warp from here straight. And if I right click on that warp marker again, warp from here straight. Now you have to make sure that you right click on that first warp marker. I need to make that really clear. So I'm going to select warp from here straight. And this is going to tell Ableton there's no tempo difference in this song. It's been made on a computer. Um, it's a constant tempo the whole way through. So from that particular point, beat one of bar one, there's no tempo change. Now what you'll see when I select walk from here straight is you'll see all the audio peaks inside that clip there all suddenly snap and jump to the nearest beat of the bar, like so. I'm going to zoom out and just go to the as close to the end of the clip as I can. Let's zoom in again, and this is at the end of the clip. I'm looking for my drums. I'm looking for my one, two, three, four, just like I have done at the beginning of the clip. And here we are. So we're looking at what? This is bar 176.2, 0.3, 0.4 to 177. Let's see if I can get any closer to the end. And um, let's go to beat three of the bar. Bar 178.3. And um, have a look at this transient peak here. Now, can you see it's a tiny, tiny bit off? Uh, the third beat of the bar there, but that's where in, in this case the uh, the kick starts and what I need to do just like I lined up the the first beat of the bar I need to find a beat towards the end and line that up with its nearest beat number So I'm going to take this uh, beat three of the bar I'm going to trust the transient peak where it is Double click create a warp marker and literally just knock that into shape by just picking it up and snapping it over to 178.3 Let's zoom out now and go and have a look at some other beats. And you'll notice that they're pretty much all rock solid. If there's a tiny, tiny discrepancy like this, I mean, I'm zoomed right in there. It's not really going to make much difference. The main thing is, is that beat for beat, bar for bar, I've lined up the beats of this track perfectly with the uh, beats and bar numbers. Let me put the metronome on so you can really hear this. And I'm just going to press play on the clip. So there's my metronome. And this is quite a useful little thing to reference against as well, the metronome. And that to me sounds rock solid. Let's just go into the track a little bit. Again, that's really nice and tight. Let's check a little bit towards the end. That's fine. So that's a very sort of, you know, standard scenario you're going to get when you're warping dance tracks. Lining up the very first beat of the track with beat one uh, of bar one. Then doing a warp from here straight, going to the end of the track, zooming in, finding a beat around the end. It doesn't really matter which one, to be honest. And just get rid of that tiny little discrepancy, that little timing discrepancy that is there about sort of 95% of the time. 
Um, now, if you just follow that procedure just again and again with every track in your mix, you'll find that all your clips are all warped. They're all prepped and ready to go for your mix. And then you can move them across into arrangement view for sequencing and editing. And also, again, as I mentioned earlier, adding these original material parts to make your mix unique. We've got full control, of course, over when the tracks come in, how they come in. Uh, and how even how they play. I mean, there are certain scenarios in, in this particular mix where I've gone in and I've actually made little edits to the intros and the outros, extending sections, shortening sections. Um, so it's great. You've got loads of, you've got total control over how each track comes into the mix and plays a part in your mix. So check out Subbase Online for all our courses and uh, I hope you found that useful. I hope this has given you uh, a fundamental a uh, bit of knowledge for attacking, doing sequence mixes in Ableton. It's really great fun. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all soon. Peace.